we could see this stock going up to $140.87 in the next 12 months. Hey guys, I provide stock analysis on this channel, but of all of the stocks that I've provided analysis on, the one that I've got the most views on is Metafast Inc., which makes me feel people are very interested in that company. For this reason, I'm going to provide an updated analysis. My last one was three months ago, but three, but a few things have changed since that time. There's also a few things that I've added to my analysis, so I want to update that. So today we're going to look at Metafast Inc. Now, I break my stocks down on my watch list into three tiers. One star, which is the lowest tier. Two stars, which is above that. And three stars, which is the highest tier, meaning most fundamentally sound of all of them. Metafast Inc. is a two-star. They're currently at $53.04 a share. And they've been moving sideways. Now, Yahoo analysts estimate that they can move up to $69.50 in the next 12 months. And I'll give my analysis as we jump into the analytics. But, so that's it for the candlestick chart for Metafast, we see they've really been moving down um, going from last year and into this year. They've been on a move down, but now let's take a look at the analytics. But before we do that, on my channel, I put out a this week's stock winners. And this week's stock winners, it lets you know about stocks that are fundamentally sound and moving up from their annual low price, their 52-week low. Um, I put those on a watch list, watch them on the candlestick chart, and let you know when they're moving up. I also have this week's option picks, where I choose a stock from this week's um, stock winners that I feel is going to do well, and I pick that for an option. Not just pick it, but actually buy it and let you see its progress over time. So having said that, let's jump into our analysis of Metafast. Metafast Inc., ticker symbol MED, is what we're going to look at today. Now, the figures for this company haven't come out for 2023. When they do, I will make a new video. But we do have the figures for 2018 to 2022 to see how this company is doing. And I've, they do have the high price for 2023, and I felt that was relevant to our analysis, so I've included it in here. So, let's start by looking at the high and low prices for this stock over the last, over the previous five years, not including 23, because we don't have all of that data yet. In 2018, their low price was $51.28. The high price was $209.03. That was a percentage increase of 307.62% for this stock. Very good. You see a lot of stocks would percentage increases of maybe 30%, maybe 50%, 307%, very good. 
but 2019, they went from $62.42 at the low price to $130.12 at the high price. That was a return, a percentage increase of 108.46%. Still good, but lower than 2018. Now, 2020, it may back up, but that's expected because prices, stock prices really dropped in 2020 because that was the COVID lockdown years. So the stock had a low price of $44.09 a share and a high price of $181.25 a share. That's a 311.09% increase. In 2021, at their low, they jumped up to $166.82 a share. And the high price was $294.77 a share. So that was only a percentage increase of $76.70 that year. And in 2022, they were at a low price of $96.46 and a high price of $197.92. That's an increase of $100. 105.18%. Now, these percentage increases are considerable. I was believing that people were mostly interested in Metafast for their dividends. But now that I look at the percentage increases, I could see people being interested in them for that reason as well. However, there is a pattern emerging. And what's the pattern, you ask me? Well, let's look at the high prices for the last, well, I guess we can say six years. We have them right here. In 2018, it was 209. In 2019, it dropped to 130. But in 2020, it went back up to 181. In 2021, it was 294. But in 2022, it dropped to 197. In 2023, it dropped to 123. And from what I saw in 2024, it was at 70 so far. So for the last three years, this stock's high price has been decreasing. And if we look at Yahoo's analyst estimate, I'm about to give mine in a minute. But if we look at Yahoo analyst estimate, they estimate that this stock will go up to $69.50 in the next 12 months. So the high price is increasing every, is decreasing every year. Maybe if we can get a closer look at it, we can figure out why that is, but it just doesn't seem to be the bargain that it was before. Now, Let's look at the high and the low P.E. ratios. And the reason we look at the high and the low P.E. ratios is those can help us to make an estimate of where we feel this stock will go in the next 12 months. Yahoo has already given their estimate of where they feel it can go in the next 12 months. Now I'm going to give mines. 
Well, if we look at the low PE for the stock in 2018, it was 11. At the high, it was 45. So that's an increase of, I guess, about 34. Um, that would be the reason why this stock would have jumped up so high that year, a 307% return. The next year, the increase in PE was just 11 from 9 to 20. I'm not counting the after the decimals to make it simpler. Now, in 2020, it went up by about 24. But what happened in 21 and 22? In 21, it just went up by 9. And in 22, it just went up by 8. So the amount that the PE is increasing over the year is dropping every year. I'm going to look at what happened in 22 and do the same. So I'm going to say let's increase it by 8. So our current PE is 4.83. 4. 8.3 plus 8. We said we're going to increase it by 8. Equals 12.83. And we're going to multiply that by the current earnings per share times 10 point nine eight equals that gives us one forty point eighty seven so when Yahoo analysts look at this and they estimate it's gonna go up to sixty nine fifty we don't know what things they're factoring in we're not surely not we're not exactly sure of what they're factoring factoring in they may know specific things about the company. I'm just looking at the P.E. ratios. And if the P.E. ratio of 4.83 was the lowest P.E. ratio it reached in these next 12 months, and it went up by 8 in terms of P.E. ratio, providing that earnings per share doesn't change, we could see this stock going up to $140.87 in the next 12 months. That's providing those factors don't change, providing that the earnings per share stays consistent and providing the PE doesn't drop anymore and it moves up by 8. We don't really know because this stock has been moving down a lot lately. And now for the last couple of weeks or so, it's been going sideways. But that's just something we'd have to look at. Now let's, now that we've looked at prices, let's jump into this income statement let's look at the fundamentals for this stock to see if the company is still showing strength well at least up to 22. so in 2018 the company made 501 million three thousand dollars overall in sales and revenue of that money after paying all expenses they retain 55 million 789,000 in net income or profit their profit margin 
was 11.14%. I wouldn't say that's a spectacular profit margin. I would say that's a decent profit margin. We see through 40s years they stayed in the 10 and 11 range. That's a decent profit margin. 2019, they made $713,672,000 overall sales and revenue. They retained $77,916,000 in profit. That was a 10.92% profit margin. 2020, COVID lockdown year. Their the notice their sales and revenue is increasing every year. So in twenty twenty they made nine hundred and thirty four million eight hundred and forty two thousand and they retained a hundred and two thousand eight hundred and fifty a hundred and two million eight hundred and fifty nine thousand. That's a 11% profit margin. 2021, they made $1,526,087,000 in sales and revenue. They retained $164,031,000 in profit. That's a 10.75% profit margin. But in 2022, sales and revenue still increasing. They made $1,598,577,000. But they retained $143,000. Five hundred and sixty-eight thousand. So it dropped from the previous year, and this year, even though they made more in sales and revenue of the previous four years, their profit margin was lower. It was eight point nine eight, eight point nine eight percent. So their income statement is pretty decent, but we have to look at what happened in that last year, 2022, to make their profit margin drop. Next, we're looking at return on equity. Now, return on equity is great. 51.13% in 2018, 74.32% in 2019, 65.41% in 2020, 81.01% in 2021, and 92.60% in 2022. So their return on equity is great. And their debt to equity is manageable. 55.29% in 2018, 85.68% in 2019, 75.57% in 2020, now 20, 96.73% in 2021, and 103.95% in 2022. Those last two years, it's increasing, but it's still at a, in a manageable range, which makes me believe they have a, a pretty good balance sheet. And if I go down to the balance sheet, in 2018, not only did their assets exceed their liabilities, their current assets exceed their current liabilities, which we like to see, but their current assets seems doubled their current liabilities. 
if we look at um, 2019, the current assets, well, actually, in 2019, the current assets didn't double the current liabilities, but almost. 2020, they doubled them again. 2021, not so much, but close to. And in 2022, no, the current assets didn't double the current liabilities, but the current assets exceeded the current liabilities. Now we're looking at the assets, things the company owns, liabilities, what they owe. Now we come to total assets and liabilities. And the, um, well, in 2018, 169 and 60, they more than doubled total assets, more than doubled the total liabilities. We see the same thing in 2019, 2020, 2021, they just about doubled. And in 2022, they fell a little under that. They didn't exactly double, but almost. So the balance sheet is pretty good. I would say it's very good. Now we're going to jump down to one of the things that compels many people to Metafast is that it's their dividends. They do pay a dividend, and it's a decent dividend compared to most other stocks, which you can tell by their dividend yield. In any event, in 2018, they paid $23,160,000 out in dividends. In 2019, they paid $35,396,000 out in dividends. In 2020, $53,190,000 out in dividends. 2021, they paid $63,856,000 out in dividends. And in 2022, they paid $71,620,000 out in dividends. So they are paying a dividend, and they're increasing that dividend every year. Now, changing capital stock. We know a company can make money in three ways. One way is by doing what they do for a living. With Metafast, that's selling their products, their diet products. The second way they can make money is by borrowing it which is what, as investors, we don't want to see happening too often. And the third way they can make money is by selling more shares of their stock. Another thing we don't want to see as investors. What we'd love to see is when a company buys back more shares of their stock. And that's something that Metafast did for the last five years, at least the five years we have in this analysis. In 2018, they bought back 30168000 worth of stock. In 2019, they bought back 46928000 dollars worth of stock. 
in 2020, they bought back $3,954,000 worth of stock. In 2021, they bought back $61,277,000 worth of stock. And in 2022, they bought back $127,961,000 worth of stock. So, they're giving a dividend every year. They're increasing that dividend every year. And they're buying back stock every year. Those are things we like to see. Now, we want to jump and look at this free cash flow. And the free cash flow is significant. We have to take a close look at that. Because the free cash flow is what tells us if this company has the money to pay us the dividend they're paying us, one, and if they can afford to keep increasing the dividend because they're paying that dividend from their free cash flow. So, in free cash flow, in 2018, Metafast had $56,072,000. In 2019, they had $74,203,000. 2020, they had $139,309,000. So it's increasing for those three years. When we come to 2021, it drops. $60,336,000. And in 2022, it increases again, more than 2020, 177,889,000. Now, I told you how much they paid out in dividends before. So now what we're going to look at is What is their free cash flow after the dividend? This will tell me if they have enough free cash flow to be paying those dividends. So in 2018, after paying the dividends, they still had had 32,912,000. In 2019, After paying the dividends, they still had $38,807,000. In 2020, after paying the dividends, they still had $86,119,000. Looking good so far. They have enough to pay the dividends, and they have enough to increase those dividends every year. But in 2021... Remember I said they didn't have as much free cash flow that year. It was around $60 million. In any event, after paying the dividend, they were negative 3520000 That means that around $60 million or so of their dividends that year well, let's look at the specific number. That means uh, sixty million three hundred and thirty-six thousand of their dividends would have come from the cash flow, but the other three million five hundred and twenty thousand probably was borrowed. But they got back on track the next year. In 2022, after paying their dividend, they still had 106269000 So they seem to be okay for the dividend. And 
it seems for the 2020 and 2022, their free cash flow was actually more than the net income, the profit that they got from what they did. Anyway, let's look at the statistics on this company. This company has a beta of 1.23, which is surprising. Beta means that it moves more than the general market. The, the market has a beta of 1. A stock that has a beta that's lower than 1 doesn't move much. A stock that has a beta that's higher than one moves more than the market. But Metafast has been moving sort of side to side recently. I'm surprised it has a beta of 1.23. But according to Yahoo Statistics, it has a beta of 1.23. The last dividend that this stock paid was a dollar and sixty five cents per share. A dollar and sixty five cents for each share. Now outstanding shares. This company currently has ten point eight nine million outstanding shares in the market. And of those 10.89 million outstanding shares, 2.13% of them are owned by insiders. Those are those working for or involved in the company. 93.61% are owned by institutions, large banks, institutions, etc. Now, the company is paying a dividend yield right now of 12.44%, which is very good compared to most companies. Their book value is 17.91%. I don't find the book value to be as significant I more so like to look and see if the company is buying back their own shares or selling more shares. And if you look on the channel, I have a video called The Truth About Book Value, which will explain my reasoning for that. So, but in any event, that's it for the statistics on this company. The management, Daniel R. Chart is the executive chairman and CEO. He was appointed in 2020. That's something to look at because since we're looking at a five-year history on this company, we want to see if it's been doing better since 2020 than it was doing before 2020. In any event, Metafast is in the personal services industry, consumer cyclical sector. So that is my analysis for Metafast, guys. You have a great day, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.